Okay, thanks so much, and I uh, really enjoyed Edward's inspirational talk, and I'd like to uh, move on to some more um, technical topics. And uh, my name is Roger Marks, and what, what you're gonna hear here now is a, is a set of three talks that are coordinated uh, in, in the form of a track, and the track is about next generation data center network fabrics, the new technologies meet operator needs. And I'm gonna do the introduction to this uh, section. So this is uh, up until till noon, we'll have uh, speakers, um, Omar Cardona and Paul Congdon will come after this on um, addressing hyperscale, high-performance computing with R RDMA and talking about some new IEEE, IEEE 802 standardization on congestion isolation. And we're trying to allow some time for discussion in this segment because we're trying to look at ways to uh, activities in the IEEE standardization activities and maybe an IETF that may be of relevance to the Nanon community and where one of our goals here is to try to reach out to the user community and find out if we're on the right track and if there's some problems that people are seeing in data center operations that could be addressed by new standardization or new technologies. And uh, it's an effort that, that uh, started with a talk I gave at the previous NANOG 75 on this topic. So this particular topic that I'm gonna do first is uh, advancing ethernet for data center networks. And I have a lot to say about IEEE standards, so I have a disclaimer letting you know that I'm speaking in my, uh, from my own views and I'm not a, giving you an interpretation of IEEE standards um, as a formal, formal representative of IEEE. But I do want to talk about the IEEE 802 Standardization Landman Standards Committee. Uh, it's been around since March of 1980, developing standards for LANs and MANs and some other kind of networks. And um, I've been active on the executive committee since 1998, so I have, I guess that's more than half of the time that the standards committee has been around. Um, in, in 802, the focus is on the uh, lower two layers of the network and the physical layer and the data link, which is essentially the MAC layer. And um, you can find out more about that in a standard called IEEE Standard 802. A specific fairly new activity in IEEE 802 is called NENDICA. It's a group that I'm the chair of, and it's about, it's, and NENDICA stands for Network Enhancements for the Next Decade. And it's not a standards developing group, but it's a, uh, activity to try to build consensus and I would say mainly look at requirements to try to understand uh, how we can make better standards and make more relevant standards. And important aspect of NENICA is that it's an open activity and it, it's open to anybody and we have meetings and we have teleconferences and we circulate documents and I encourage all of you if you're interested to participate, you're welcome. We, we don't develop standards, but we, we may come up with uh, documentation explaining why we think there's a role for new standards. And uh, one of the things that you'll hear about today from Paul Congdon is, is uh, how some of that documentation that we already developed has spun off into a new standardization project. The, um, the previous report that this NENDIC activity published was called the Lossless Network for Data Centers, and it tried to look at what some of the um, key factors were for um, losslessness in data centers and uh, the applications of those kind of networks and um, how we can try to manage congestion to achieve uh, lossless networks. So that document was published, but it's uh, subject to ongoing comments. So if you want to comment on it, uh, feel free to do so. We'll consider those comments and we may, we've had discussions about reopening the activity to a revision of the report with additional information. Let me just skip over this. Um, there's a few slides that are, that I'm referring to here that came from the report. 
that just talk about the functionalities and the, the, the process that happens in data centers. And the intention here is of this slide is to try to, to talk about um, uh, an in-cast problem where some kind of uh, aggregator farms out a problem in the data center to uh, many different distributed workers, but all the responses have to come back to the original source and they're very strict latency requirements, but there's also a, this um, in-cast problem where um, uh, lots of packets are, are arriving, are all d addressed to the same uh, destination at the same time, and that leads to congestion. Uh, one of the uh, focal points that we have here, and, and Omar will be discussing this in much more detail in the next talk, is um, related to the use of uh, RDMA, remote direct memory access in the data center. And so what, I've, what I'm showing here in this slide um, is, a, is a comparison to the, the data flow you'd see with, uh, with uh, RDMA as compared to what you'd see with a kind of a normal um, TCP IP application. So on the left, you'll see um, traffic that flows. Let's see. Um, the, the traffic that flows down from an application down into sockets and a, a transport driver and onto a NIC and uh, uh, data that flows across the network on a NIC and back up through the, the stack at the receiving target. And um, the, this, this uh, technology that, that uh, has spun into modern RDMA um, I think a lot of it began out of the infinity band technologies and, and um, what came out of infinity, infinity band was this technology called Rocky or RDMA over converged ethernet. And um, the basic idea is to be able to transfer data from, from memory to memory uh, um, directly among two servers. And one of the things that happens is that the, the network driving uh, is all done through an advanced Rocky supported NIC and that takes the computational activity out of the server and frees it up to do other other things and makes for a much quicker and more efficient process. And so I think that originally a lot of that data traffic was developed for high performance computing and for fast storage and, and uh, originally on an entirely separate uh, network operation. The idea of, of um, Rocky was to be able to support this thing over converged Ethernet. So to be able to put it on a, uh, a network interface that was also used for other purposes within the network. And um, Ethernet was the, was the technology of choice. And uh, that's, that's, how Rocky, um, that's how Rocky developed. And uh, you can sort of see in this picture the, the evolution from uh, three, three different stacks here from uh, this infinity band transport protocol in, in the old days going over an infinity band link layer. And then with uh, Rocky, the, that infinity band link layer being replaced by Ethernet link layer. And then more recently, Rocky V2, which um, gets rid of the, the IP, IB interfinity band network layer, replaces it with UDP over IP. And so this is the, um, the, the current um, implementation of Rocky is this V2. And the problem that we see here is that the, um, this infinity band transport protocol is, um, is dependent on the transport layer beneath it and it's not tolerant of packet loss. And um, neither UDP, so UDP is not giving you any protection against packet loss. And historically, Ethernet didn't either. So um, in this kind of environment, it became pressing on the Ethernet layer to take more and more of the responsibility and be able to provide the, um, the losslessness at, at that level. So, um, the, let's skip to the next one. So back in uh, 
around 2006, IEEE 802.2 began a uh, task group called the Data Center Bridging Task Group to develop improvements to the 802 technologies to be able to support these uh, more advanced uh, requirements on Ethernet. And the key technologies that were developed and standardized at that time were uh, PFC or priority-based flow control and um, congestion notification and enhanced transmission selection. And I'll just quickly highlight these, but you're going to be uh, getting more uh, more detail about these issues in the co next couple of talks. But um, in a sort of schematic way, a data center network, um, you can see that you can have um, an in-cast problem. And even if you try to use ECMP or some other way to distribute your flows, uh, you're always going to end up with congestion at the, at the output source because all the packets that are addressed to that source are going to result in in-cast at a at a, um, at a single node. And um, the 802.1 standardization approach to try to address this, that's priority flow control, um, is, is designed to um, pause flows based on the, um, the priority level. And so it's a, it's a more advanced version of the Ethernet pause statement, which would um, basically um, be a complete, um, complete pause of all traffic classes. So this thing can uh, pause for traffic class. But uh, what we found is that that's too crude of a, of a, a tool, because um, there can be flows that are, are not contributing to the congestion, and they get paused in any way because they happen to be of the same um, traffic class. And that's one of the things that we've tried to look at in our, um, in our activity that's led to this uh, new standardization uh, topic on congestion isolation that Paul will tell you more about. Um, this figure is a, a bit complex, but it's trying, to, um, it's trying to illustrate this problem of head of line blocking where the um, um, pausing a single traffic flow will lead to uh, a lot of congestion throughout the network. And one of the things that, you, you, that we regularly hear from people that do data center operations is that the PFC is, uh, adds a lot of complexity and is kind of unpredictable. And people feel that it's, um, it's not something they're comfortable with. And um, <clears throat> one of the approaches that that we've, we've taken in, in the standardization activity is to introduce this congestion isolation, congested flow isolation, as a way to um, get a, a much more refined version of, of flow control that can isolate and, and, um, uh, and control a, a single flow at a time and let the other ones to continue. Um, these slides, I think you can, you might want to uh, take a further look at these uh, offline, but this is um, trying to illustrate on a system-wide basis the the um, the ability of the isolation process to let um, the so-called victim flows continue without without pause. I have here a list of some of the the sources that um, that the figures have been extracted from here. And um, before we, we proceed to the next couple of talks and, and uh, uh, Omar and Paul's talk, um, I, I want to just refer back to this NENDICA activity um, because I do want to encourage you to look at the report that we've, we've issued and um, look at how we might want to do an update to it and um, other kind of standardization activities that may be useful. And remind you that we're open process. We've got a, a website that's open, and you can read about our, our meetings and teleconferences. And we're trying to think about how we can do further outreach to the NANO community. If we find that there's some uh, synergy, we want to see if we can think about what we could do at future meetings and future opportunities to, um, uh, to try to see if we can address your needs. And I would like to 
wrap up my talk a little bit early and turn the floor over to our next speaker. Um, and I don't know, moderator, do you want to do an introduction or no? 